The sport of judo is an interesting one. In the past, we've covered wrestling from the Olympics down to the NCAA level, but judo has been a blind spot to me. But now we're fixing that. Today, I want to look at Shohei Ono and the Uchimata as the cornerstone of our future studies in the sport of judo. So on today's technical readout, we will do just that. Born in 1992 in Yamaguchi, Japan, Shohei Ono was destined for greatness. Since he started competing, Ono was won every major championship he's competed for. Ono's closet is filled with enough gold to make big Alex McDonald blush. Two Olympic medals belong to him, gold that is, both in 2016 and 2020. He has six world championships, three individuals coming in at 73 kilos. Ono has won an Asian Games gold, five IJF Grand Slam titles, two IJF Grand Prix golds, and he also won the 2011 World Junior Championships. I swear, they probably write rap songs about how much gold Shohei Ono has in his closet. Famously after the 2016 Olympics, Ono said of his fighting style, For me, it's the Ono style of judo. What I wanted was to demonstrate that the Ono style is the strongest judo style, the number one judo style. That certainly was the goal entering the Olympics. As of 2016 and 2020, Shohei Ono has proved just that. Before we get into the dynamics of Shohei Ono, we must first look at what the Uchimata is. A traditional Uchimata is considered an Ashiwaza, which is a foot technique. In the Uchimata, a judoka will have the collar and sleeve of their opponent, and they will turn 180 degrees and sweep them over the bodies with the foot. For an Uchimata to be effective, the attacking judoka must first get the proper grips, second, break the balance of their opponent, and third, execute the throw. But Shohei Ono has a unique approach to the Uchimata. Traditionally considered the Ashiwaza, like I mentioned earlier, Ono's Uchimata is more akin to a Koshiwaza or a hip throw. What separates Ono's Uchimata is a small adjustment in how he approaches the technique. The first thing you see in his iconic Uchimata is that Ono doesn't always turn the full 180 degrees into his opponent. Instead, he will turn half that, 90 degrees, and execute the throw. You can see here that Ono's back, which would be looking at the sky in a full 180 degree turn, is facing out to the side. This allows the attack to be a hair bit shorter and a hair bit faster, one of the small X factors that Shohei Ono uses, which allows him to get his plant foot inside his opponents quicker. Another nuance to Ono's game, this time much more significant, is the fact that he's essentially a southpaw. A southpaw fighter keeps their right hand and foot forward. Most fighters across any combat sport are orthodox, which is just the opposite. Left hand, which is your weaker hand, and your left foot is forward. This allows for your power side to be backwards, and you utilize the momentum when you use your power hand. Ono uses this to his advantage in some very unique ways. With an Uchimata out of traditional orthodox stance, a judoka will step in with the left foot to plant for the execution of the throw. The key here is that the foot used to step in is the rear foot. With Ono's southpaw stance, he often steps in with the lead foot. By doing this, he steps in extremely deep adding to the leverage of his throw. He often will hop to his rear foot to plant and use the lead foot, which is already in position and doesn't need to be swung to utilize the earned leverage to execute the throw. With the right foot being in position, it also speeds up the Uchimata of Shohei Ono adding yet again to the speed of his throw. 
The foundation of all judo is to break an adversary's balance to throw them. Shohei Ono's southpaw stance and right leg step in only magnifies this. With Ono able to step in so deep, he gets in further on his opponents, deeper underneath their center of gravity. With the Ippon and Judo needing not only the back to touch the ground, but also force and speed, by stepping in so deep, Ono throws his opponents fast and hard, assisting in the achievement of an Ippon. Ono's southpaw stance also gives him an advantage over an overzealous attacker. When his opponent comes forward looking to get Shohei Ono moving, he can slip that lead foot in all sneaky-like and set himself up for the Uchimata quite easily. He does this quite often actually, and while counterattacks are nothing new or revolutionary in combat sports, much less judo, Ono doing so from the southpaw stance gives him some different looks and also his opponent's different looks to counterattack on and throw from. The different looks makes a big deal because of the fact that most fighters are in fact orthodox. With fighters being orthodox, they only see counters from the left hand or the orthodox side. But with Ono being a southpaw, the attacks come from different angles and different ways that a judoka might not expect. This is basically the same principle of southpaw versus orthodox mechanics across all of combat sports whether it be with wrestling judo striking sports it all gives the same advantages it's not coming from the left it's coming from the right with how dominant shohei ono was during his prime in judo there will be many more case studies on japan's premier lightweight in the future with Ono fighting out of Southpaw and how effectively he used that in conjunction with the Uchimata and many more techniques, there will be new Judoka coming through the ranks that will undeniably utilize this. Think Bud Crawford being a switch hitter in the sport of boxing coming in after Marvin Hagler showed that it could work in a modern version of the sport of boxing. Because of how good Ono was, we will start to see more and more Judoka coming out as a Southpaw. He's figured out these techniques much like other southpaw judoka before him. Make no mistake, Shohei Ono isn't the only or the first southpaw judoka. He's only the most recent and the most successful in recent times. While his accomplishments are highly lauded, deservingly so, the new era of Ono's career will be through coaching. Only 30 years old and still in his prime, there's still much more judo for Ono to revolutionize and innovate, but that innovation won't come to the light through competition. As a coach, he will be handing that off to the next generation of competitors. Ono's retirement will only grow the sport even bigger than it is now. The future of judo is bright.